Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and part two of our two-part study of the church at Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. We are demonstrating that a terribly mistaken approach toward Laodicea has run rampant in fundamental and conservative Christian circles, ignoring the fact that this once thriving church has fallen into total apostasy, whose members are blind, naked, and do not have Jesus Christ living in their hearts. That means they're unsaved. This is a church filled with unsaved professors, and it represents the majority of Christian churches today, with only a small number of Philadelphian believers and Philadelphian churches left to go on and go up in the rapture. To many viewers and listeners, that sounds very different from what you may have heard when being taught the book of Revelation. But on the authority of Acts 17.11 and 1 John 4.1, we urge you to listen and test what you hear by the Word of God in your King James Bible and not the Word of man. As you listen, we want to remind you that these Bible studies are always available free of charge by video and MP3 audio at our website, kjvbiblebelievers.com. We will repeat this information and provide contact info at the end of the study. But with no further delay, we now want to join our study in progress of Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 22, The Church at Laodicea, Part 2. Fifty years is a long time when you have false teaching. It don't take more than a few months I've seen churches totally out turned upside down with bad teaching, a false gospel. And Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 22 and 23, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never, never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. These are people who spent their lives in ministry. Unsaved, apostate, lost. Jesus never knew them. That's an amazing passage. Especially when you look at who He's describing. It kind of looks like the TV preachers, don't it? And that's why I say that the following verse describes the American churches. We have this word faith movement. Mainline Protestant churches, the ecumenical churches, the emergent churches, the purpose-driven churches. Churches in name only. Read verse 17 with me. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now look at that close. First of all, that's exactly what... The word faith churches in the Pentecostal charismatic movement, the positive thinking churches in the uh, mainline Protestant churches, that's exactly what these churches teach. I am rich. In, you know, it doesn't say they are rich. They say they're rich. See? These people go around refusing to believe that I am in poverty. I am rich. I have no want or need. I am a child of the King. I have the riches of heaven. And they just go on and on with saying all this stuff while they're sitting there being foreclosed on, giving all their money to some crook on TV and some church that teaches the seed faith thing and all that, saying all this when it's not true. They don't even realize. They don't know. They're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. We deal with, Mike I could testify the rest of the evening or at the midnight. We could tell stories of the people that we tried to minister to. Tried to reach and say, wake up. You're a sucker. You're being used. They're bleeding you dry and you're getting nothing out of it. It's been 10 years that I know he and I both observed the same people continue to do the same thing. What do they say? The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're doing this. What's that going to get you? A headache. Amen, Brother Jim? People just keep... It's just an amazing thing. They are convinced this, this saying, a confession, positive confession they call it. 
Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that point on the, uh, um, we were talking about the, that you're neither cold nor hot. I always had problems with that too. There, um, I was trying to understand, you know, think about how can it be that you're either like hot for the Lord, really doing the work, or you're cold and not doing anything at all. Like God's glad some people right. are cold. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did, I, maybe I should have expanded on it. Have you ever heard that? that? They try to make it look like, oh, being hot for the Lord is good. He'd rather you be cold than to be lukewarm. And that's, that's one of the teachings on that that's just ridiculous. It's not what he's saying. God's not saying, I wish you were hot or completely cold dead rather than being lukewarm. It's not what he's saying. He's saying that they're, you know, in Laodicea, who he's written that to, and we need to consider that, there's these hot and cold springs that are good for you, but you're that lukewarm stuff that people drink so they can vomit. <laughs> and that's what he's threatening to do. So, this positive confession heresy that I mentioned, I don't know if you're aware of this, but that is actually what's called mind science. Um, if you go back to E.W. Kenyon, was probably the most famous mind science teacher of the early 20th century and then men um, like the uh, William Branham's, the um, Kenneth Hagen's, uh, the, uh, I'm trying to think of some of these guys, of course Oral Roberts and some of them, they picked up on these mind science teachings of E.W. Kenyon. And if you, there have been people who have done There's books out there already where they compare their very words with E.W. Kenyon side by side. It's plagiarism. But see, they kind of sanctify it and say it's okay because they Christianized it. No, it's heresy. The New Age movement, the same thing's happening. With all this, you can be a god. And then you got Kenneth Copeland around saying, you don't have a god in you, you are one. Yeah. That's a direct quote from Kenneth K Hagen. Uh, Benny Hinn and Paul Crouch on TBN stating... We are little gods. All of that stuff they took from the New Age movement and they say it's okay because they've Christianized it. No, it's heresy. It's blasphemy. It's false. But that, nothing new under the sun. Amen? Amen. <laughs> it was going on in this church in Laodicea in the first, end of the first century, going into the second century. And he says, uh, Thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This is an indictment of the entire congregation in Laodicea. This is not something that could be said of any legitimate local church made up of blood-bought, born-again Christians. That's why we understand, again, nailing it down that this Laodicean church was a true church that had gone totally apostate. And that's what's going to be left behind after the rapture. That Laodicean church. Now, here's an interesting thing in verse 18. Read that with me. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, uh, he uses the word buy, and that's perverted by the cults to teach this whole thing of you doing something, you giving something in order to purchase your salvation. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely false. This word buy, and let, me, let me just let that sink in for a second because I've noticed, I've taught on this before and I've seen the light bulb go off with people on this. You immediately think of buy, you think of swiping your card and soon it'll be a mark, <laughs> but swipe your card to to purchase something, right? I mean, that's what you think of. But think of this. In this context, the word buy is used in the informal sense of to accept the truth or accept the truth of. And here's a couple of sentences that are used as an example. I am not prepared to buy the claim that the ends justify the means. You've used the word exactly that way through your entire life. I hate to buy into stereotypes. That's not purchasing anything. It's to accept the truth of. I hate to accept the truth of stereotypes. You see, how many times has somebody said, uh, uh, well, I had somebody tell me something this week about uh, the whole politics thing. I'll stay out of getting into specifics. But I just looked at him and I said, I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. I wasn't talking about exchanging cash. I was talking about accepting what they were telling me. And that's exactly the way the word buy is being used in this verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me 
And then he describes what it is to buy. Now he says, buy of me. You see, when you buy into Jesus, you inherit the kingdom. Amen. When you buy into Jesus, you get the gold. When you buy into Jesus, you get the clothing. Do you realize those who are not saved will stand at that great white throne naked before God? And that'll be the least of your worries. But only those bought by the blood of Jesus Christ will be clothed in white raiment. Here's what you get. Gold tried in the fire that's pure. You get the white raiment clothed in Him. And eye salve to see clearly. Now, that sounds a little strange to us, that eye salve thing. But those rich hot springs we mentioned up here in Heropolis, they were just 10 miles away from Laodicea. And they contained these minerals that were a natural eye salve and healing agent. So what they would do is they'd take the little tiny stones in the streams that have been in there for how many years, you know, hundreds of years or whatever, maybe thousands of years, and being coated. And they'd take those stones and they would grind them to powder. And then they would mix them with a, just a, a neutral agent that would make it into a salve. And then they would put that on the eyes to heal the eyes. And it could be anything from pink eye to whatever kind of eye ailments that they suffered from in, back in that day. And so that's the reference. Again, Jesus is telling that He uses the things that are in the lives of His hearers. You remember, you go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He was constantly pointing at something right before their eyes and teaching them. That I was talking to somebody recently. You know, there's whole denominations that teach foot washing as an ordinance. And the foot washing wasn't an ordinance. He was using something of that culture. Everybody walked around in sandals. I'm backslidden. i got tennis shoes on tonight. But uh, they walked around in sandals. And so when someone came into your house, if you really wanted to show hosp your hospitality to that person, you grabbed a towel and a bucket and sat down and said, How you doing there, buddy? And you started washing their feet. And they'd be like, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Spot. Yeah. You know, that was hospitality. How weird would that be if I did that to you today? <laughs> Thomas comes over to my house next time. And I was, yeah, see, he would be all right with it. All we do is let our little Bojack lick his feet. That's a... <laughs> uh, Roxy's famous. So, <laughs> so he, he, speaking to the Laodiceans, who lived in this area, who used this product, that's why he says to buy of him this ISAV. Here's something just very interesting in light of the end time, current events. Today the United Nations under UNESCO has declared the Heropolis Springs we're talking about as a protected biosphere. They've claimed ownership of it. The UN is claiming control over most of the Earth's land, surface, and oceans in preparation for the one world government under Antichrist. Threw that in free of charge because in the next few weeks we're going to get in up to here with the United Nations, with the European Union, with NATO, with the U.S. government, and on and on. I can name all the alphabet agencies and all the secret societies and all that. That's all in preparation for what's about to come with the Antichrist. Now you can go on the internet and I believe you can go right to the United Nations website and do a search for a biosphere map and it will blow your mind when you see how much land they have claimed ownership of. And all it takes is for a country to sign off on the treaty and it's a done deal. And by the way, another free of charge in this day, what is today, July 18th, 2012, um, Madam Hillary is over with the UN about to sign a treaty that will uh, be an attack on our Second Amendment rights to own and bear arms. And the, they are about to sign this treaty that would give the United Nations the authority to come and confiscate our guns. Amen. Prepare for war. Just saying. And they are doing so because they know our Constitution better than the citizens of this country know it. Mm -hmm. Go home and read your Constitution. You'll find that any foreign treaties supersede constitutional law. 
any foreign treaty ratified by the Senate supersedes our Constitution. Right, this has to have to be too ratified by the Senate. So. That's right. And that's where, they're, that's where they're heading with this. And if the, we sign on to it with the United Nations, it comes back to the Senate. They sign it. And I'll tell you this. You have some big event that is comparable to 9-11. And they'll get that treaty signed by the Senate. And Joe Biden might be the one right now who would pass the deciding vote. But either way, they get that signed. We're done. And that's when you have to decide if you're going to go out like uh, the Jews of Masada or you're going to go out like the Jews in Hitler, Hitler's Nazi Germany. Yeah. That's what you have to decide. And I know... That scares some people off when I talk like that, but I'm just being real with you folks. Uh, do you realize, I know you do, <laughs> do you realize how few decades have passed since that happened in Germany? We have people who l were alive when it happened. Still, very young, vibrant people. It hadn't been that long ago. Just like we were talking about 50 years since the between Laodicea being a true church and falling into apostasy. Mm -hmm. It was 50 years from the time of the uh, charter of the United Nations that the whole world was singing a song by John Lennon in unison around the world by satellite transmission. And the whole world, schools, churches, governments, all hooked up on satellite. I believe it was 1998. And they were singing, Imagine there's no heaven. No hell below us. That song is a Marxist, atheist theme. Anthem. And the whole world joined together singing it 50 years from the Hitler Holocaust. And then let's not even talk about the fact that for decades after that, Russia raped and killed millions in their concentration camps that doesn't even get any press in this country. They don't even talk about it. And I think it's just sad and sickening that so many millions of people died, were prison camp, slave camp victims of that Russian system over there, Soviet system. And we don't even talk about it. If you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. Ignorance of history is creating a nation of fools in the United States of America. Ignorance of history. That's right. That's what he called them. That's actually Lenin, Lenin. who founded the who was the Bolshevik Revolution that produced the Soviet Union. So now in verse 20, would you notice this? He's talking to these people in Laodicea. And Jesus says, read that with me, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now look at that. I pray that that is not a message for you tonight. Because if so, you're not saved. Amen. The message to the Laodiceans is a message to a bunch of unsaved people. He's standing at the door knocking, trying to get in. You see, as Christians, uh, Jesus doesn't come into churches. <laughs> I've heard people talk like that. I've heard people pray like that. People pray, Oh Lord, we pray that You will come down and be among us. Hey, if there's one believer in here, Jesus is here in that believer. Let alone the fact He's omniscient and omnipresent. Omnipresent is the right word, the right uh, character trait there. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. But where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Mm -hmm. If these were true believers, Jesus would, wouldn't have to come into them. He'd already be there. Colossians 1.27 is this truth. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. I have a friend who came to me today and asked me, because his pastor is constantly praying, send us the glory, show us the glory. 
and they never reach it. They never get it. It's always something they're reaching for, always something they're going after. Why? Because you ask them to define it, they can't. It's this weird Gnostic mysticism. The glory, according to this, is that He's in you. And you don't have to be at a rock concert with loud drums and loud music singing, Oh, Jesus, 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 saying His name over and over and jumping up and down and getting all wild and everything. At any moment, if you let the truth of God settle in your heart and mind, you're in His presence. He's in you. He's with you all the time. David was in, under law and he said, I encourage myself in the Lord. How much more those of us who are sealed with the Holy Spirit under the day of redemption. Don't go running around saying, Oh, show us your glory. That'll come. <laughs> right now it is for you with Him in you to go out and get stomped into the ground. Amen. What do you think happened to John who wrote this? What do you think happened to Paul who wrote this? What happened to Bartholomew? What happened to Thaddeus? What happened to Judas, the brother of James? Some of you are getting ready to correct me, weren't you? <laughs> or Jude, Judas, the brother of Jesus? What happened to Peter? Name them all down the line. What happened to Stephen? Got stomped in the ground. This Christianity today of I'm going to always be healthy, wealthy, happy. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. I mean, that's the kind of... You expect them to change the hymn book and start singing that kind of music. Well, some of them have. Yeah. And then, You've made me so beautiful. I want to thank you. I'm not making that up. That's a real song. I sang it bad, but that was a real, that's a real song. I heard it on the radio. Yeah. A couple weeks home, driving home. I want to sing about Jesus. I want to sing about my future. I'm going to thank God this ain't the glory. Amen? Amen. If this is the glory, help us. <laughs> but let this sink in. Verse 21. Read that with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in His throne. Wow! I will confess to you right now my sin of reading that many times until one day reading it and you talk about getting slain in the Spirit, brother. Just sitting there all of a sudden, boom, it hit me. And I just thought, That is an amazing statement. Why? Because I think he means it. <laughs> I don't think he says anything he doesn't mean. He's going to grant that we sit with him in his throne. Who's he that overcometh? We read it. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Those of us who believe, let, I just said, let that sink in. To sit with him in his throne. That's an amazing thought that I don't think any of us can really wrap our brains around. And he compares it to, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my Father in His throne. And I've often thought, I wonder how you could make it. And I think that's probably the best picture right there. Because you can't really make it out. Yeah. <laughs> There's too much glory mm -hmm. in our little minds in this fallen state that we're still in to even think that we can imagine what that is going to be like. Just nothing but a consuming fire to us right now. I think about Moses just seeing the, the backside of who you know, sitting there getting on God's floor like that and he's showing his head you know, bright and stuff they had to cover it up but people couldn't If you haven't it. meditated on that, That's... go back to Exodus and read about that and really let it sink in. That when Moses saw what the Bible refers to, God referred to it as, as his backside, meaning it wasn't his full glory. And yet, when he came down off the mountain, his head glowed. <laughs> right. 
And he had to put a veil on. Because it was scaring everybody to death. Seriously, that's exactly what happened. The people were like, oh. let's put a veil over this guy. And This stuff is amazing. <laughs> Spend a little more time thinking about what you're reading if this isn't sinking in when you're reading it on your own. Really. I, I'm with my hand up. Not because I'm telling a joke, but that's a personal joke. But you ever heard of Wendy Bagwell? He's a singer. He always told these stories and he'd say, ah, that's the truth with my hand up. Because you know. Anyway. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And so that concludes our study of the seven churches. And as I said, next week, now we're going to pick up with an overview. And we're going to see how these churches relate to the different uh, ages or segments of the church age, church history. Mm -hmm. I like that teaser that you gave. I, I believe that myself because that word that uh, Philadelphian church actually in that way of seeing church, although it, it does kind of exist right now, yeah. it won't actually exist until after that church has been wrapped around. Right yeah. And I think it, that's something that really bothered me the first 10, 12 years that I was just studying the Bible and studying the Bible. And, Man, person after person, man, I respect these men. I, I, I'm not saying they're heretics or anything, but they would teach that we're in Laodicea now. And I would think, well, what's that say about you? <laughs> and what's that say about me? And so I'd look at it, and it also in Philadelphia, it promises to keep you from the hour to day. Well, Laodicea is going through the tribulation. And like you said before, there was nothing good said about the Laodicea. Yeah, nothing good. Yeah, that's why I say, and we're going to look. Every one of those overlap. You'll see there's an overlap. In other words, there's not like a, a date, like July 4th, you know, 1776. It's not, it is, there's overlap. And the only sharp beginning is actually debated as well, because the first church, people love to debate when did that first church start. And here's an overlap, again, because I don't think the first church was in full fully established until the end of the book of acts but it began immediately after the resurrection yeah that concludes our study of the church at laodicea from revelation chapter 3 verses 14 through 27 if you missed part one or you would like to watch or listen to hundreds of other messages just like these including our complete study of the book of revelation you can watch on streaming video or download the message in MP3 audio, available free of charge at kjvbiblebelievers.com. You may contact us by going to our website and clicking on the Contact Us button at kjvbiblebelievers.com, or you can write to us, and we do appreciate letters of encouragement. We also freely welcome your prayer requests or questions by writing Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Please tell your friends and loved ones about KJVBibleBelievers.com. Everything on our website is free to all. We feature videos on the gospel of Jesus Christ for eternal salvation. So be sure to invite your lost friends and loved ones to the site as well. You can post the link on your Facebook, Twitter, or other blog sites as well and share in this outreach ministry. That web address again is kjvbiblebelievers.com. I am Pastor Greg, and on behalf of Bible Believers Fellowship in Worthington, Ohio, we thank you for listening.